Oh, look at that guy. All right, Reefers, so I wanted to do a quick, quick video update. So, a lot of times when I'm doing these videos, um, one question that I always get is, why are my A-cans so fluffy? How are they so round? So, apart from feeding all that fun stuff, I noticed that for the last two week or two, a lot of my A-cans weren't as fluffy and as happy as usually. So, I started to investigate. So, something I did was I have a stick. Let me see if I have it around here. I don't. But it's a huge stick that helps me move things around. And I moved one of my A-cans. And when I moved it, guess what was under it? Bristle worms. So, this episode, guess what we're doing? We're talking about bristle worms. Let's go. All right, guys. So, I noticed this guy's doing pretty happy. This guy's not so happy. This guy's pissed off. But then when I go up here to the new little A-can garden, these are all happy. So, I started processing before I even flipped these guys over. And I realized he's sitting on a little plate. He's sitting on its skeleton. He's sitting on its skeleton. That orange one at first was on its skeleton on the bottom and he was unhappy. As soon as I put him up there, look how fluffy he is. Crazy. These two, I got at Worldwide Core. Shout out to Worldwide Core, they have really good deals on AQs. But when I flip these guys over, I realized that there was something inside. Before I flip the eight cans over to see if there's anything inside of them, um, I want to talk to you a little bit about the A-can coral. So the A-can coral has a skeleton at the bottom. And what sometimes happens is the bristle worm will actually bury himself through the skeleton into the tissue. Um, they do that to even uh, clams. So a lot of times reefers will start trying to figure out their water parameters, lighting, when actually they're just being eaten alive from the inside. So I've had experience with this in the past, and what I usually do is I'll grab the coral and I'll do a coral dip to make sure that if I didn't catch all the obvious worms, I got the ones that are still inside. So let's flip these guys over and see what's really in there, um, and hopefully we can take care of these acans. I'm gonna try to flip them. Um, I have found bristle worms in my sand bed in the past. So although what I'm gonna do, if you guys watched the last episode of Zilla Teen Boys, episode 22, I removed the substrate from the, the 20 gallon. So unfortunately, what I'll do is I'll remove these two bigger colonies and put it in that area because there's no uh, bristle worms on the sand bed. And currently I, don't, I ran out of plates, like little tiles so that I could put them on. So let's flip these guys over and see if we find any I'm pretty confident we will, so. All right, so let's focus on this little guy right over here. All right, so I'm actually gonna flip him and see if there's any bristle worms under. And right now I do have the orange polyp lap filter, so we can kind of get a little bit more clarity. All right guys, let's do this. One, two. Oh, look at that guy. All right guys, let's, let's get in, let's get in. Let's get in. There we go, look at that. That is why this coral is not opening up. And I have cleaned this little guy in the past. There you see the copper band going right after these things right over here. The copper band butterfly fish right here. He was nipping at it, but there's that huge, huge bristle worm. Let's see if he goes after it. No, this guy's a little too big. So, let's try to out for him before he goes into the tissue. Okay, there, you see him? Guys, that's crazy. And there, I think here's another one. Another one? That's another little guy. So they have tons of, so this core, I will be doing a dip. There's a whole bunch on here. Oh, 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 oh. keep it out, keep it out. Oh. The, 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 the copper band wanted to eat him. The copper band's looking. Copper band's looking. He's interested in the worms. <clears throat> All right, guys. That's crazy. All right, so let's see this guy now. Let's put him back. Because I don't want to get a lot of sand in his tissue, even though that already happened. Get a little closer. Super close. All right. Let's try it with this guy. He is doing better than yesterday. Um, 
I don't see any here. I don't see any here. I think he is clean. Yeah, he's clean. <clears throat> Alright guys, so what I am gonna do, there's there's the cop of man, FBI trying to catch any bristle worms. So what I am gonna do, I'm gonna do a coral dip on this little guy here. I'm gonna inspect this guy again, and then I'm gonna transfer him into uh, the Red Sea Max Nano. Let's go take a look at that thing. All right, guys. So if you watched the last episode, this thing here is bare bottom. So all the parameters are doing good. Anemone is alive. She's got a huge piece of krill. Um, other than the occasional hair algae, which happens whenever you remove the substrate, um, everything's doing fine here. So let's do the uh, coral dip and see how that pans out. All right, guys. So I got me a bowl of water. Here's the coral. Now, the coral being outside of water is not a big deal. It's not going to for too long. So, and here is coral, the coral RX. I've been using this for a while. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a cap full in here, and then I'm going to use this to clean this coral. So, cap full of this. Put another one for all the stinking little worms. All right, guys, before I continue, don't act like you don't see the Zoltan boy shirt. All right, so, I'm gonna do this. All right, buddy, I'm gonna take care of you. So lightly. I'm gonna dust it. There will be no bristle worms in the next. Well, bristle worms aren't bad. So let me back up and say bristle worms are not bad. However, when you have corals with exposed skeletons, in example, acans, clams, just like in this instance, it is known they will crawl up in there and they're took us. Look at this little, look at this guy, look at this little pink nasty sugar. Oh, come on, I'm gonna get you. Oh, there you go. Got his ass. Not today. Not today. And they bury themselves. So if you see these crevices, they will go in there. And next thing you know, your coral is not as happy and is dying. But even lay eggs in there. So let's let the base soak on that. All right, Reapers. So I'm gonna take this puppy out. Look at that, we got that nasty worm. So I guess that's the only one that was left in there. So I wanna rinse this little guy off. Cause I do not wanna put him in the, in the tank right now full of chemical. All right, so I'm gonna get another bowl, fill up the water and I'm gonna clean him out. Fresh cup of water. Rinse this puppy off. Let's rinse them off. I do not want to get any chemical in the tank. Okay. And now I'm going to grab my tongs. Now I'm going to place back in the other tank for the. Alright, so grab them. Welcome to my room, Chris. This is all the magic one. Just kidding, guys. This is one of our guests. Come on, buddy. You look clean. Brush your teeth. I think it's pretty clean. Put this in here. He's gonna ooze. So, a lot of times, people see this and they freak out. In the next 24 to 48 hours, he's gonna repel goo, sticky stuff. He's gonna look terrible. It's okay. Acans are super hardy. Acans are super hardy. So do not freak out if you see him repelling foods. He did just go through a chemical treatment, but he is doing fine. So 
I'm also gonna transfer the other acan into this tank. However, I'm not gonna do an iodine, uh, uh, a coral dip. Reason I'm gonna transfer him is in the past, and by the past I mean yesterday, I flipped him over and he didn't have worms in his skeleton, but he had them on the skirt of his flesh. So I did scoop those out and that's where I got the idea of maybe showing you guys what this looks like. So I'm gonna bring him here, that way he can, you know, thrive here, but I'm not gonna do an eye uh, cold dip because I don't wanna put him through the stress. All right, guys, so let's grab him and put him in here. I can't grab that um, coral with this because there's actually, it's a square and the square is full of coral. Um, I'm also not gonna put my hand in the reef because I don't like doing that. So I'm gonna use this net, I'm gonna be super gentle, I'm gonna pick it up from the ground and transfer it over. So I'm all the fish going to hide because they know there's when the eviction happens. But you guys are so Oh, that could have been a little smoother. Whoa, get, get this, get this, get this, get this. Look at him, look at him. Somebody get the filter. Wait, let me get the filter. There's a worm on there. Hot as ass. Okay, put this on there. You see the worm? There he is. There you are, buddy. Guess what? You're going in the coral dip. Let's go. Definitely going to the coral. And I am not gonna touch this conversion worm sting. Let's see what we got. Look at this guy. Not today. Not today. You guys can see how that is exposed. The reason that's exposed is because he is chewing on it. I do have time. I can try to get him up. But he, right now, he's trying to dwell him, to get him to dive himself by him. I don't have speed. He's trying to go into the skeleton. Because he doesn't know what to do. So I got the tweezers. You do not want to touch bristle worms with your hands, they do sting. But let's grab this sucker. Oh. No! Oh, God. I got a bit of 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 a all right, let's inspect, see if there's any other worms. Let's flip this. That way, if there is any, it'll be in the bottom. And like I said, guys, they, this is gonna repel its ooze. That's okay, that's its defense mechanism. Not defense mechanism, that's its, when it starts peeling back up. So cool little fact, if anybody ever wondered how you fragged um, a cans that in between is where you grab your saw and you cut. So it's a pretty easy process as long as you have a nice clean cut. So, so far, so good. We got two big worms out of these colonies, two huge worms. Come just in the nick of time. I had a huge orange colony once, um, probably with. 20 heads, it was huge. Um, died, I don't know why. And sure enough, it was full of bristle worms. So, seems pretty good. Pretty clean. So now let's grab this. Move into the clean water. Anybody else in here? Guys, look at all the muck we got out of this thing. Pretty impressive, huh? So your corals and your tanks are gonna give to you what you give to them. So if you take care of your corals, you take care of your tank, your husbandry, then your tank will be done. If you don't pay attention too much to your corals, well, you may have a couple issues where things might not look as pretty or thrive as much. 
So this core, I am gonna put in the tank by hand, just because I don't wanna use this or, or the tongs because it is all flesh. So let's grab them. Be careful, I don't wanna damage the skin too much. Let's put them in the other side. So we got the little guy here. I'm just gonna drop him. Actually, I'm not gonna drop him. I'm gonna hit it. Alrighty guys, so they are in the tank. And hopefully this bristle worm flea environment will do it justice. Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed this episode of Zoa Tank Boys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know what you think. Let me know if there's anything you'd like to see. Till next time, Zoa Tank Boys out.